Hey everyone, I'm here with Scott Hall from Gabala Syntropic Farm <laughs> and we're going to talk to you a little bit about what uh, Scott's doing here on this amazing farm that is absolutely lush. So Today you're standing in one of your amazing rows here, at Gabala Syntropic Farm and I thought we could talk about what, why you sort of planted this particular consortium and um, share a little bit about what's going on there. So sort of what was the purpose of this particular consortium that you picked? Well, this, this consortium is a, essentially a citrus row. It's a mandarin row. Okay. Um, this is how we grow mandarin without fertilizer or, you know, importing biomass or, um, you know, uh, we, we generate our fertility right here where the mandarin is. Through, through the biodiversity. And so for those that don't know, is that a mandarin right in front of that's, you? That's the mandarin. Okay. And so when you planted, you planted seeds and seedlings, is that? Yes. Yep. And yep. so what was the selection that you chose around here to help support the mandarin to grow without fertilizer? Well, mandarin forms part of a consortium mm -hmm. and um, its life cycle in our context is from kind of three to ten years and we have the option of keeping it uh, for, for, for longer than 10 years if we want but yep. um, so this mandarin now is just starting to come into its age mm -hmm. when it's going to be a significant part of the consortium but of course when it's a young baby when it's a child yeah it has to be supported by parents and cousins and uncles <laughs> and aunts a family yes of plants yes, of and plants and so did you plant the mandarin as a seedling or a seedling. a seedling and was what was there to protect it when it was growing up the uh grevillea robusta the silky oak mm -hmm. the banana yeah the mother um this here was one as well this is a pigeon pea okay yeah this is pruned back it'll come back again in in a couple of weeks it was it started it'll it'll really put on the growth mm -hmm. but it's going to it's going to this pigeon pea is going to pass its goodwill onto this mandarin now because the pigeon pea said i've worked hard for two years and i'm actually an old plant yeah and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to give life to you because you are now taking the the, the baton your, your mm. succession is being passed on and the vigor is coming through this plant now um, much the same as with the bananas yep. they've been here for two to three years and they've, they've been of immense help they've been hit very hard by the frost mm -hmm. in the last month yeah and um, they they're actually going to we're going to probably say goodbye to the bananas this year because the citrus again are moving in and and they're coming into their their uh, um fruition <laughs> yeah, fruition yeah, to, to, the, to the fore yeah. of the consortium but also there's things that is you know as the banana leaves something else has to come yeah and we have new species that are emerging constantly in the tree line in the center and this is something that may be of interest to people who have observed pictures of syntropic agriculture online or in photos and mm -hmm. so, so whatever um you're always seeing the eucalypts and bananas Mm. Well, this is what is inside those pictures. The details in the ground here are all of these different species of tree that are all growing. We've got hundreds and hundreds of different species of seed in here. We don't care what it is. We just get it and put it in and nature selects. It will decide who will grow. Yep. Uh, and so we leave it to that. But we give it everything we we have no discrimination whatsoever and then it expresses and then so when the grevillea go the banana go and then we start to see pictures of syntropic agriculture that don't have the bananas and the eucalypts in them they're, mm. they're getting a little bit older they start to have all of the other types of trees and, and this is in transition to that now so we have tulip wood coming up is there an avocado over there? There's an avocado back there. Um, there's bunya pine. 
Uh, they're all babies. Yeah. And they'll be big one day. You know, we, we this will may well sit under a bunya pine, mm -hmm. this plant. Um, so you're, you're actually getting yields of different things at different times. Whether that's it's right, it's successional, yes. Timber, biomass or fruits? Yes, yes. At the start we got corn, we got zucchini. Okay. Uh, because it was the placenta. So your placenta consisted of corn, zucchini, was there oh, anything look, else? I can't remember, but it was a lot of vegetables. Okay. It was, yeah. it was the placenta, so it was the annuals that start. So then the consortium they always works from the youngest, smallest life cycle to the largest through succession. And um, of course, the earlier in the piece, the shorter the life cycle the plants are. Yeah. So, um, but we'll, we'll, we'll actually plant again. Yeah, I mean, we didn't get everything right at the start. We were very much beginners. Yeah. And, uh, you know, here's, sorry, here's more species coming through. Yeah. Uh, leopard tree. They're all happening. It's all happening. They'll be healthy, vigorous trees that will again pass their life on to something else. That's awesome. Uh, as nature does. And so you will prune certain things for the biomass to help again build, regenerate yeah, well, the soil. Yeah, we're coming in the spring now. We're going to have a, a change. Like we we were, we two years, three three years ago, we we didn't know what we were doing. We were just learning, and we've got successional gaps in here. Mm -hmm. Plus, we had you know wild pigs or pigs. <laughs> and cattle and stuff come in here but that's all sorted out we hope but um uh what we'll do is we will prune out the bananas and there will be a few gaps we have other species that are coming in beautifully and doing their job yeah. but we want more we will have gaps in our consortium so mm -hmm. what we will do is we're going to like a forest gets a bit of disturbance and then new species come in and pioneer the area that's what we will do. So when these bananas come out, for example, we will plant in there um, some uh, medium strata biomass plants mm -hmm. that will cre keep creating biomass for the next sort of five years. Yep. Uh, also, you know, Ligustrum, maybe uh, tulip wood. Also the I system will decide what they yeah. are. They have the options. Mm. Um, and then um to, to to nurse those new plants coming through we will uh and we have a we have overhead dappled shade so we'll we'll be we'll be focusing on medium strata plants that are coming coming back and the medium strata plants will go back in life cycle again and we'll start with a cucumber vine mm -hmm. coming back up to this wire mm -hmm. and it will lead a raspberry and then we'll manage that raspberry for three years or so while the trees that we planted with the cucumber and raspberry grow underneath and are nursed by them uh, and then from that point on when the raspberry's lived its life cycle we're probably going to be dealing with a fairly large sized tree that's going to um, really start to push this forward into abundance yeah wow it's really trans it's transitioning slowly now from um, accumulation to abundance um, you know, if you have a look right behind you, Haley, and just right behind you there, and have a look at that beautiful black bean right there. Yep. No, that's a, that's a <laughs> Where am I looking? To your right. Oh. There you go. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's lush. Yeah. New life. Yeah. And so with this biodiversity, all these different things that you're planting, it's creating such a nutrient-rich soil, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, life. Life. It's increasing life, and life begets life. As yep. long as we don't intervene and destroy it, if we support it through its natural succession, succession is a constant increase into the quality and quantity mm. of consolidated life, as yep. has been said by <laughs> Felipe Pazzini. <laughs> and one last thing, right in front of you, I see we've, uh, is that oats and silver beet. Yeah, we, we're growing biomass in between here, of course, because it's not a void, the area between the tree rows. And we've winter cropped a crop of oats in here so we can biomass this in spring. Yep. And so uh, you'll put that on top of yeah. and help protect. So you don't have to travel far, it's just putting the This is the fertilizer, you know, the greenness, the lushness in this in these oats is it's nitrogen. Yeah. It'll go on and it will feed the system. Uh, in amongst that part of the consortium is of course chard. 
Because yep. food plants and biomass <laughs> plants, any kind of plants, there's n zero discrimination between any. There's no reason why a food plant can't grow with your biomass plant and vice versa. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, there's good reasons why it should. So yeah, that becomes part of the consortium without taking away. And we also have a summer vigorous grass in here as well, which when it warms up in another couple of weeks, it will take over and, and after the oats are gone. So yeah. it, will, it will provide biomass through, um, through, through spring and summer. And then in the center, because the whole effect of this crop alley is medium strata, we have a potato crop awesome. in here. Potato is medium strata mm -hmm. and its, re its relationship with high strata in emergence to form the consortium of the tree rows. So it's, it's a big consortium. Yeah. It gets bigger like. It's exciting. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Scott. It's all right.